There's so many, um, but I will name, um, I never got a chance to meet Teresa Hoover, but she is somebody whose uh, life I have read about. Uh, I've known people who knew her personally, and I, all, I hear, always hear the same thing, that she was a no-nonsense, that she was focused, that she was, um, you know, an advocate and a voice for this organization and that she um, made sure that when the, the unification in 1972, that the women were able to be the fiduciary responsible parties for what they had accrued over the years in terms of assets, in terms of finances, and that I am forever grateful to her for that, that we still are able to uh, manage and uh, take care of, of our of our own, of what women's hands have toiled and labored for for many years. And so uh, Teresa Hoover, uh, I understand, was a big part of making sure that that was part of the negotiations and the unification. And that's when we became United Methodist Women, still under the umbrella of um, the Global Ministries as the Women's Division. And then in 2012, we became uh, our own agency and are still a part of the United Methodist Church today. And so I celebrate that, um, that, that her legacy continues to drive me forward and, and our organization as well. And the, not just her, but others uh, that have uh, been, you know, throughout our history. Um, but in terms of who uh, I always kind of admire, and I use a lot of her quotes sometimes, and one of the things she said was that, you know, the women's organization of the church may bend and, um, you know, have to make shifts and adjustments, but we'll never be broken. And I hold on to that all the time because I, I'm a firm believer that the women will always show up and the women will always bring a voice and a perspective that is needed, may not always be heard, but usually over the course of time, it proves to be true. And so I celebrate uh, definitely Teresa Hoover.